Servus, Mena, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I invite you to join me on a trip down the rabbit hole that is the German state media or public broadcasting as they call themselves. You all know my opinion, of course. I think they are a corrupt globalist bunch that is put in place in order to produce propaganda against the German population, against European people. And they can do so being paid very well by by a special tax that is not called a tax, that is called a broadcasting fee. But it is in fact a tax because everybody needs to pay it. Everyone with an address in Germany who makes money, who is not a welfare recipient has to pay this. And that is why it is a tax and not a fee. And this tax in disguise is as much as over 200 euros per household annually. And that makes the German public broadcasting or the state media the most expensive in the entire world. In today's video, I I want to generally introduce the problem or the organizations again and then I want to show you by the example of a recently uncovered great corruption case what the common practices in the German state media are and bear in mind also that France for example our neighbor across the Rhine they just abolished that uh, media fee or that broadcasting fee and that is of course a very curious and very inconvenient timing for our our globalist propagandists here in the public broadcasting service in Germany. So that puts them under a lot of pressure, despite the fact that, as I said, most media outlets really present that in a very misleading way and they try to make it look like as if nothing big happens. And it's just the shortcomings of one single person. But I will show you that this is not the case. So the general situation is clear, I guess. I also mentioned that and talked about this in many videos over the years but just recently we got a very interesting glimpse behind the curtain a look behind the scenes of how it actually looks like in these public broadcasting institutions how they spend the money that the citizens of Germany have to uh, pay for them how deep the corruption the embezzlement and the misappropriation of public funds is reaching here Despite the best efforts of our media in Germany, some events and some very curious practices became public and that is the case of Patricia Schlesinger. She is the director of the public broadcasting of Berlin Brandenburg RBB. And also at the time she is or she used to be actually, she stepped down from office now, she used to be the chief or the director of the ARD, the first German public broadcasting channel. Please remember and please take notice that uh, this network ARD and the federal um, affiliates, they were founded by the US military after World War II. So this was installed as a means to control the German population and of course doing that in a way that is beneficial or that is according to the will of the forces that won the Second World War and the forces that also until this day control the United States. So it was a military propaganda tool from the very beginning. Beginning. All right, after this historic side note, let's look into the things that have been uncovered about the great leadership of the very qualified and very bright Patricia Schlesinger in Berlin. Now I want to structure these findings a little bit. The first one is very important in Germany, maybe not so important in other countries, depends on how you look at these things. And that is the very high salary and also the very luxurious office floor that she had there. And also some other benefits like drivers and very expensive cars and really luxury items. And so Germans are very peculiar when it comes to these things. We envy the rich and the powerful and uh, I think especially in the free market on the free market we take it too far because we even are envious of um, businessmen who made that money in the free market and that is in my opinion when they really put in the work and the effort I think this is not justified but um, I would agree when it's public servants who use public funds and they have no risk as entrepreneurs whatsoever and they just um, get from the public funds these luxury 
luxury items and these extremely high salaries, then I also think that's not really appropriate. Let me know in the comments down below how this is in your country, if your people are okay with public servants making that much money or if you are okay with um, like CEOs in the industry making that much money and having big cars and drivers. But uh, Germans are very peculiar when it comes to these things, I have to say. This is a very sensitive issue for us. And now let's get into the examples in this first sector. For example, when she assumed office, she immediately uh, tore out the carpet in the office um, and she replaced it with fine oiled Italian uh, wooden floors for 17,000 euros or something. And then she has not only flowers in her room, but she has an automatically irrigated plant system on the walls or something, which is also like um, several thousands of euros. And uh, I think the entire office was over 600 hundred thousand euros and that was just her moving in basically a change in an administrative position and the cost for well I was almost saying taxpayer it is basically the taxpayer but the money comes of course as I mentioned before from all the German households who pay this broadcasting fee and from this money of the German workers just because there was a change in leadership and a new woman uh, moved into this office six hundred thousand euros right away gone so on top of that, she has a really luxurious Audi that is uh, at the price of 170,000 euros, where she got a 70% discount from Audi, which is really interesting because I'm not aware that other uh, cars that are used by politicians or by public servants get this kind of a discount. Maybe there was some favorable coverage for the Audi corporation. I don't know. And then she had, as I said, two drivers that she could also use for profit private driving and there were cases where she used these cars and these drivers um, to lend them to people she knew and then she has a salary of 300,000 euros a year which is absolutely ridiculous for one of these public administrators where there is no risk and no real work involved but it is actually in the midfield of all the people um, federally in Germany in a similar position yeah, it's from 250 to 400,000 so hers is somewhere in the middle and on top of that there was a 20,000 euro bonus because of course she deserves a bonus right and remember all of this is happening at a time when the um, German state is asking Germans to save wherever they can and to not take showers anymore and to not heat their apartments and where this broadcasting fee was actually increased and at the same time the public broadcasting houses are complaining that they don't have enough money even though they are getting as much money as ever before. They have the highest influx of money via these radio fees that has ever been in Germany. So maybe they're spending a little bit too much and uh, when you see what these directors make and how they can outfit their offices, uh, then you start wondering where this money goes really. So there is much more to say here, but I just want to leave it at that. That is the complex one, which is high income and, uh, well, a luxurious office. So all this stuff is in and of itself, not illegal or weird. It is just that many of the items are clearly luxury items and uh, that um, the height of the salary is really questionable. But in and of itself, it is cause of not illegal that she draws a salary. It's just the amount that is questionable, especially in Germany right now. So let's move on to complex two. And that really goes into a whole different direction. We have news now that she gave dinner parties in her private apartment with several elites of Berlin and the Social Democratic Party. For example, among others, the head of the famous Berlin hospital Charité was present. Also, the Berlin police chief Barbara Slovik with husband. They were there at this private dinner party that cost over 1,000 euros and they had uh, several bottles of uh, French white and red wine and champagne and all that stuff. A four-course menu it had to be, of course. So they were indulging in gluttony and boozing and who do you think had to pay for this? Well, the hostess, Patricia Schlesinger, just declared this private meeting, and I wonder if it really was private, she declared it a 
business dinner and then um, the broadcasting house which is funded once again by the working people of Germany had to pay for this luxurious dinner with all these globalist elites in her apartment. Now just to give you some context I covered of course what happened in the last two years in Germany when it comes to medicine and hygiene and certain products and several protests and demonstrations against the mandatory use of these products on the people. And there is now a hospital chief and a police chief present in this uh, media director's home. Because I remember that the media was misreporting about what went on at these protests and also the police chief Barbara Slovik was uh, making really, really misleading statements about what happened at these protests. Let's just say there was some violence and they made it sound like the violence was done by the protesters when in fact it was done by the state-friendly counter-protesters, the Antifa protesters that were um, put in place against the quote-unquote enemies of society. That's how they literally referred to these uh, health protesters. So there was this Antifa mob that was injuring a couple of officers and that was in the statements of the police chief and also the media in Berlin um, blamed on the other side. The side that they wanted to frame as right wing and conspiratorial and dangerous. And then they had this dinner party there all together. Maybe plotting or maybe they're all friends, I don't know. But this needs to be investigated. And these things go into a whole different direction than just uh, misappropriating money for your own private um, profit. That is a whole different kind of corruption that is going on behind the scenes, all paid for with public funds. It is also interesting that this police chief, Ms. Slovik, was put in place after the previous police chief investigated some left-winged lairs in Berlin. And that displeased the higher-ups in Berlin, so they put her in place instead. That is also an interesting side note. So if you investigate Antifa for the crimes that they committed, then you get replaced by some women that is very Antifa-friendly. And that kind kind of lies to the media and the media that reports about these lies once again they meet at dinner parties and they drink champagne and red wine and enjoy four course menus on the expense of the German working family. Now I don't want to drag this out too long but the husband of Frau Schlesinger is also involved. He was given a weird and suspicious consulting contract by a Mr. Wolf who is also sitting on the board of the public broadcasting in Berlin there and also on the board of the Messe Berlin which is a trade fair of sorts. Now when you look at all these people they never worked a single day in their life. They're just sitting in these administrative public positions where they draw salaries that are higher than um, the uh, positions you have uh, corresponding positions on the free market in the export industry where actual money is being made. Now they have five board positions of like these public institutions like the swimming pools in Berlin or the opera or the broadcasting or the state or trade fair all these kind of public institutions and they all work together behind the scenes they are like a clan they are like a mafia organization it is a really weird um, constellation that we're having there and they're all giving each other contracts and they're vouching for each other and and um, yeah, when this guy, Wolf, then was sitting uh, at the board of the um, broadcasting in Berlin, Brandenburg, yeah, well, he turned a blind eye on what he saw, this um, luxurious spending, this spending binge of uh, Frau uh, Schlesinger. Since they're all a big family, he didn't find anything weird about that. So to put it in other words, um, the institutions or the bodies that are put in place in order to, on paper at least, control these other bodies and institutions and these big players, they are in on the corruption themselves and uh, it is all a big 
big circular weird kind of shadow economy that is fueled by taxes and by these radio fees. And these people who hold these powerful administrative positions, they can decide what happens with that money. And of course, they think of that money as somehow their own money. Yeah, and they pass it on to their relatives and to their friends and to people from the same political party or who they owe a favor to still or something like that. So that means public funds are their private funds in their eyes and in practice as we see here. And to wrap it up I want to say this is of course just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, in Bavaria there was a new case now uncovered that is at least or well it's at the same order of magnitude and uh, we will see if in the next weeks and months there will be investigations. If we lived in a a true democracy in a real country that is governed well, the journalists would start to investigate all of these people now. And by the way, Frau Schlesinger, um, as I said, she stepped down from the office of ARD chief now. But she still wants to keep her bonuses and also a 15,000 euro per month pension. She wants to keep that when it was clearly uncovered that she probably, well, I have to say probably, but it, it, she really did commit these crimes. Yes, they are crimes that she committed. Probably, allegedly, of course. So just look at the confidence level of these people. It was just uncovered that for years and years they committed crime after crime and now they say, well, but I really want to keep my pension. I mean, come on. Once again, if Germany were a real country where the rule of law prevails, then these people would all be in front of a court and very soon they would be in jail, all of them, not just her. Because as I said, it is, of course, just the tip of the iceberg. But I doubt that the media in Germany and also the prosecutors, that they will even look into this. It is summertime now and they will just wait until another topic comes into focus and then the masses will forget about that. Also, I want to add that all these people who were at this dinner party at Frau Schlesinger's, they of course threw her under the bus right away by saying, well, I was not aware that this was anything but a private dinner hosted by a friend. And of course, I assumed that she pays for that with her own money and not with the uh, RBB's money. Not by misappropriating the radio fees of all these German people. And I don't know if we can believe the police chief of Berlin when she said that, but well, she was clearly throwing her under the bus now, Schlesinger that is. All right, so there are many more details, but I want to keep it at that. I think I could show you by some examples um, how these people at the top are using our public funds as their private luxury slush fund and that our control institutions are completely failing us here. The media and the prosecutors, they're not doing anything. Well, I mean, there was an investigation launched against her now, but I don't think that anything big will come out of it, and I'm sure she will keep her pension and she doesn't have to go to jail. But yeah, well, if something surprising happens, I will let you know in an upcoming video then. Enjoy the rest of your day. Servus, Kameraden.